You know, the first Lucasfilm journey outside of Star Wars since going over to Disney is not Indiana Jones, but it's Willow. And I remember they surprised a lot of us when they said they were going to do, you know, bring back Willow and they were going to do a sequel series of it. And to which I kind of pulled a Chris Carr and said, for why? But I mean, I love Warwick Davis. So anything that puts him on the screen more, I'm totally good with. And so, and then, you know, I still wasn't all into it, but the trailers looked pretty cool. The trailers looked fairly appealing. So we went in and watched the first two episodes that dropped of Willow. And of course, we did a review of those first two episodes. I was kind of underwhelmed by them, to be honest with you. And then I watched the newest episode last week. Last last week's the newest episode that's out currently. There's a new one coming out tomorrow at midnight. And again, for me, flat. Like, it was really, really flat. And I had somebody write to me yesterday, and this is why I'm bringing it up as an off the top. Somebody wrote to me yesterday and asked, is this even thing even worth watching? Because they hadn't started it yet. And I had to actually go back and go, you know what? Honestly, no, it's not worth watching. And they wrote back, oh, what, what is it about it that doesn't work and all this kind of stuff. Here's the, here's the thing about it. <clears throat> Remember I was talking about how with Pinocchio, they, I never felt that moment where Geppetto actually became emotionally bonded to Pinocchio, right? That one little example kind of to me explains all of Willow so far. I just don't believe or feel or have been able to experience any of the bonds between any of the characters, like at all. And if you had given me a two-page treatment of the first three episodes of Willow, said, okay, this is going to happen, and then this is going to happen, and then this is going to happen, and then episode three ends with this happening, I would probably look at it and go, that's, that's pretty good. That looks like a really nice skeleton of a story. The problem is it is it feels like they took that skeleton of a story and handed it to a high school drama club and said, Ooh. make something out of this. And which is unfortunate because it's being made by some really talented people, which is why it's so disappointing because there are some extremely, extremely talented people associated with this thing. But like, I'll give you an example. Same thing in um, in last week's episode. If you're watching the show, Willow's buddy dies and I felt nothing because despite the fact that they had a couple of lines of dialogue between the two of them through through the show i never they never made you feel the bond right if you're going to have emotional climaxes you have to do the emotional building first to have that payoff and it does that doesn't mean you needed more time but you got to use the time that you give those characters to make us feel and believe and love that relationship so when the one guy dies and willow's torn up i'm like Eh, when the mentor character dies too, it was the same thing. It's like, yeah, you had some pithy lines of dialogue. I've raised you, girl. I was like, okay, yeah. When that dude dies, it's like, yeah, I didn't feel anything. When something is happening where you're supposed to feel excitement, eh, they didn't do anything to make it, it. It's almost like there's an assumption that this is happening. Therefore, you should feel excited. And it's like, no, that's happening. That's how you build emotion around it to get us excited about it, and they just never did. And so this whole show, the three episodes, I'm like almost three episodes, three hours into the show now, and it all feels like very light, very high school drama club, uh, just empty calories. It just feels like empty calories. You know, and, and that's funny because I have nothing overtly, hugely negative to say about this show. It's not like there's anything I can point at in Willow so far as says, well, that's stupid. And, oh, they did that terribly. And, oh, that person's performance is awful. Like, I, I've got none of those. It's just a complete, abject lack of anything good. It's just there. Warwick Davis charms the hell out of you the whole time he's on screen, as he always does. I love him. I could just hear a three-hour recording of him saying, Alora! I could hear him just saying that. And it just, it whisks me away. makes me feel nostalgic. It's fantastic. But it just seems to be a very paint-by-numbers, no emotional investment. It's just a not well done put together thing i don't know how far along are you into willow at this point i've seen three episodes so you've seen all three that are out so far yeah where are you on this? and I, I i have to say that i kind of feel the way you do i was surprised like if you're going to do a show called willow willow doesn't even show up till the end of the first episode and it's not about him and i i'd be curious like 
I would have thought if you're going to tell a story, what's it like when somebody young has this incredible adventure in their life that becomes, you know, hugely formative and that person up until then, uh, and then years later, not much happens to them. And Willow's kind of living, he's living his best life in his community and everything. And he's Bilbo. It, well, in a sense, in a sense he is, but I don't get the sense that he wants to just sit home and write his, I mean, Bilbo wanted adventures too, but it, the, 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 it's the central problem of the story is not really Willow's. He's like swept up in it and feels, well, I guess I have an obligation to go on this story. And, and I thought that the characters that they introduced in the beginning, it's like Joanne Whaley's in a different show. Her, I thought mm -hmm. she was great and she's really uh, involved, but even these characters, their, their character traits felt very modern. You know, everyone, I didn't believe like. Well, Lady Hawk did the same thing. R well, right? but, so I, but I mean, that can work. but I mean, the, the, but even in Lady Hawk, the music was modern, but the characters felt of a piece. Really? Even Matthew Broderick's? You think oh, so? I thought so. Okay. I mean, the humor was, but with these characters, I'm like, I honestly don't care about any of these characters. I, I agree. I yeah. care about Willow. Like, I get it. They wanted to update this and make this contemporary in certain ways. And I'm like, but why? If you're using fairy tale and fantasy tropes i think the, the the first thing you should concentrate on is your main character what's his like and john i hate to say this i kept thinking about top gun maverick in top gun maverick top but maverick has become an iconoclast he's he's one of a kind you know he's the last of his breed and he's out there hanging his ass on the on the edge every day where he's got to be and and that made him interesting at the end you know when ed harris says why do you even bother? Like, you know, the drones are going to replace you and that might be so, sir, but not today, you know, and you love that guy. And I wanted to love Willow. I wanted like, and Willow needs an excuse to leave, to go off on another adventure. And the show isn't about him per se. He's just a secondary character in his own show. Yeah. And that's what bothered me about it. These other characters are like, whatever. They seem like really lazy, modern, tropey constructs. And I was expecting more of this show. You know what? I wanted more magic. Yeah. It's a fantasy show yeah. that is lacking magic. Chris, have you had a chance to be watching Will? If so, I haven't gotten to watch any, and I really liked the original. I, December and January are nightmare months for me in the best way possible, but there's a lot going on, and we also had a very rough weekend um but i i'm holding out hope my plan is to binge this when we're on hiatus and just watch everything all at once after watching the movie because i i really liked that world and i felt like the original one when i rewatched that too did have modern sensibilities and it felt like it was more timely than the usual kind of like high rp kind of uh language that's used in a lot of fantasy so i don't know maybe i'll have a different reaction than you guys but here's the in that original though like I bought into the bonds like mm. in the original when like when Willow's talking with his wife and stuff like it just you felt it like they they got me emotionally hooked into it and with this it's just so it's also surface it's like they had this great like I said I think you break down the plot into a two-page treatment it reads really well I think yeah that'll be cool but then you got to flesh it and I just feel like they haven't fleshed it. And I, I think I am now tapped out of Willow. Anyway, guys, question is for you. Have you been watching the first three episodes of Willow? If so, what do you think? Maybe you're one of the people who's really enjoying it and you're loving it so far. That's awesome. Maybe you're kind of like me or you're kind of like underwhelmed by what you've seen so far. Whatever you guys feel about Willow, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. We want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. It is the most festive time of the year and HelloFresh is here to help make the most of every moment. From holiday hosting to dinners during busy weeknights, you can count on HelloFresh to deliver fresh ingredients and 
seasonal recipes. Because tis the season for saving money wherever we can. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery store shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. You can use those savings for holiday gifts or treat yourself. Guys, you know, I've told you before that with Ann and I both being working professionals, finding time to prepare dinner together can be a chore, but HelloFresh has made it easy and fun for us to make our own meals. And most importantly to me, they're delicious. You will actually enjoy making dinner. So right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia18 and use the code Campia18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Once again, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia18 and use the code Campia18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping.